Okay, so yeah, so this talk is on the security of the Fiat Chimir paradigm when applied to statistically uh, sound proof. This is joint work with uh, Ron Rothblum and Guy Rothblum. So Ron was supposed to give this talk. He's an amazing speaker, but unfortunately for you guys and for me, uh, he couldn't make it, so I'm, I'm gonna be his proxy. So, okay, so let's start. So the Fiat Chimir heuristic is a really, really beautiful and elegant way to convert any three round ID scheme into a signature scheme. So what is the difference between an ID scheme and a signature scheme? The main difference is that an ID scheme is interactive. It contains three rounds, whereas a signature scheme is non-interactive. You just sign a message. So what is the idea? How do you kind of reduce this interaction? So the idea is extremely simple and beautiful. So the idea is the following. You know what? The signer is gonna produce the entire three messages denoted throughout this talk by alpha, beta, and gamma. He will produce this on his own Subject to, beta will need to be a hash of the first message alpha and the message to be signed M. Okay, so when you want to sign the message M, you generate alpha like the prover, beta will simply be a hash of alpha and the message you want to sign, and then you sign, you generate gamma. So alpha, beta, gamma is a proof, and it's accepted if it's an accepted transcript by the verifier of the ID scheme, and if beta is indeed the hash of alpha in the message, okay? And this hash is gonna be part of the public key. So that's the transformation. It's extremely simple, it's elegant, it's nice, and it's the great power of it is that typically signature schemes were extremely complex and to construct, and the identification scheme are extremely simple to construct. So it kind of shows you kind of a very way, a very easy way to go from one to the other. And indeed it was extremely popular both by theoreticians and more applied people, I'm sure most of you. By the way, show of hands, who's heard of this paradigm? The future paradigm? Okay, so yeah. So as you see, I mean, we've all heard about it and it's, it's, uh, it's really beautiful. And the main question is, is it secure? So if you start with a secure ID scheme, do you get a secure signature scheme? And let me give you the intuition why it is secure. Okay, so what can an impersonator who tries to forge a signature, what can he do? He gets this hash. Now suppose this hash is really great, it's like a pseudo-random function. So it's like random, and moreover suppose that all the impersonator can do is kind of use this hash as a black box. Okay, it's kind of obfuscated or something, all he can do is kind of use it as a black box. In this case, in Generating, generating this transcript by alpha, beta, gamma by interacting with a box, with a random order, with this box, is really the same as interacting with a verifier in the ID scheme. So if the ID scheme is secure, the signature scheme should also be secure. Okay, so that's the reason why security should hold. And indeed, this was formalized uh, in the random oracle model, so it was proved that this uh, uh, paradigm is secure in the random oracle model if the hash is uh, modeled as a random oracle by a series of beautiful works, starting with the work of Poncheval and Stern, who gave a really, really beautiful idea with the forking lemma uh, of showing this, this security. Okay, so the main question, though, that remains, is it secure in the plane model? So can we come up with an actual hash function, not a random oracle, but an actual description of a hash function for which this paradigm is secure? So in 2003, together with Shafi, we gave a negative result. We showed that no, and let me explain to you what, we sh what exactly we showed. What we actually did is we gave a contrived example of an ID scheme, of a secure ID scheme, for which the corresponding signature scheme will be insecure no matter which hash functions you use, okay? So this ID scheme is contrived, so it didn't really say, you know, oh, don't use the hash functions, it's insecure. The take home message was from this work is that don't try to kind of prove a general possibility result for the fiat Chimir paradigm because we do have counterexamples. Okay, so in general, it's not always secure. Okay, actually this fiat Chimir paradigm, paradigm, even though it was originally defined to convert ID schemes into signature schemes, it's much more general than that and has a lot of applications beyond ID to signatures. And in particular, it's been used, it can be used to kind of convert, to sh reduce interaction in any interactive protocol. So you can start with any constant round public coin interactive protocol and convert it to just two rounds using the Fiat Chimir paradigm. Okay, how? 
In the first round, the verifier will just send a hash, as before. And in the second round, the prover will generate the entire transcript on his own, where the random uh, messages of the verifier, he will compute by hashing the transcript so far, okay, using the hash that he got from the verifier. So you can think of it in this extended uh, setting. And again, uh, oh, and, and this, this is very useful. It's been used a lot. One of the staples examples is uh, uh, Mikali's very influential work on CS proofs uh, uses this paradigm. And there's been many, many works in the literature uh, that use this paradigm. And the main question, as before, is it secure? When we look at it in this extended setting, do we get security? So, one can very easily, one can show that the same kind of idea of puncture valence term can be used to argue that this paradigm, this extended paradigm is secure uh, in the random oracle model. Okay, so again, if we model H as a random oracle, it is secure. But then still we ask, is it secure in the plane model? And in 2001, in his seminal work, Baraka gave a negative result. He showed that it's insecure. And again, let me explain what, I, what we mean by insecure. What he actually showed, he gave an example of, he showed the existence of a constant round public coin zero knowledge protocol. Okay, this seems a priori completely unrela unrelated to the Fiat Jumeo paradigm. However, it was known that the existence of such a zero knowledge protocol, immediate, it immediately implies the insecurity of this extended Fiat Jumeo paradigm. Why? So here's the intuition. The intuition is the following. What does it mean? So let's say this protocol here, the interactive proof, is zero knowledge. What does it mean? By definition of zero knowledge, it means for any cheating verifier V star, there exists an efficient simulator who can simulate the interaction, right? So this simulator actually can be a cheating prover uh, in the two round uh, protocol. Why? Think of the V star, the cheating verifier, as instead of doing what he's supposed to, he uses a hash. Okay, so he actually generates the messages in this interactive protocol using a hash. That's a type of a cheating verifier. For this cheating verifier, there exists a simulator by the zero knowledge property. And this simulator, given the hash, just generates an, a, a transcript that is indistinguishable. So this was noticed by work of Hata Tanaka and by Duo Ketal, that if we did have a zero knowledge protocol, that would immediately, a, a public coin, constant round zero knowledge protocol, it would immediately imply uh, the insecurity of the Fiat Jamir paradigm. And since Barak gave constructed such a zero knowledge protocol, we got the insecurity. Okay, so, so far, I just gave you examples why the Fiat Jumeir is insecure. It's in the extended Fiat Jumeir is insecure, as was showed by Barak. The original Fiat Jumeir is insecure, as later showed by Shafi and myself, as a follow-up work to Barak, and we actually used uh, many of his ideas. But still, I promised you that I'm gonna, I have a positive result. So wh where's that positive result hiding? Um, so let's take a, closer look at the negative results. If we take a closer look at these examples of where the negative result comes, we can see that the initial protocol, both the ID scheme and the zero knowledge protocol, have only have computational soundness. Okay, they're not statistically sound. Okay, so the interactive protocol, if you're all powerful, you can cheat. You can break the protocol. So one can ask, well, what if we start with an interactive protocol that has statistical soundness? Can we, is the Fiat Jumeir secure in that case? So if you start with an interactive proof that's statistically sound and convert it to a two-round argument using the Fiat Jumeir paradigm, is there own any hope, uh, is, is, can we prove that, it, uh, that it's sound? And in a nutshell, our result is yes under strong assumptions. So what do we show? We show that the Fiat Jumeir, the extended Fiat Jumeir, the focus, think, it'd be easier to think of the extended Fiat Jumeir throughout this talk, uh, is secure when applied to statistically sound proofs as opposed to arguments under strong assumptions such as IO obfuscation. And I'll, I'll get back to the assumptions in a minute. But before I explain uh, the assumptions, uh, in more detail, let me uh, first 
uh, talk about prior work uh, and the security of Fiat Chimera for proofs. So we noticed a long time ago that our negative results were only for computationally sound proof, and there's a lot of work trying to prove or disprove the Fiat Chimera paradigm when applied to statistically uh, sound proof. And let me kind of give you uh, the main uh, results in the literature that I'm aware of. So on the positive result, uh, Barak, uh, Lindel, and Vedan showed that there exists some property of a hash function, some kind of entropy preserving property that I don't want to define, that if your hash function has this property, that when you apply the Fiat Chimera with this kind of hash function, you will get security. But whether there exists such hash functions, we don't know. Okay, there's no construction or instantiations. Uh, later, Dodi Setal showed that there actually does exist such a hash function that has this special property, but under some assumption, and assuming that there's some uh, robust randomness condensers with the certain properties, and whether such things exist, we don't know. So, you know, we kind of know what we're looking for, but we didn't find it yet. And very recently, uh, there's a result by Middlebeck and Venturi, who actually show, gave a positive result for a special class of protocols, special class of ID scheme, so that when you convert them into signature schemes, you'll get soundness. But this special class doesn't contain, I don't know really what's in there, but nothing that, none of the ID schemes that were around that you know, we're suggesting the literature are contained in, in this class. They also showed how to kind of convert some ID schemes with some properties under I.O. to kind of fall into this special class in the CRS model. So they do have some kind of a general result as well. Okay, and the negative result, we also know, this is joint work with Bitansky et al., that you cannot prove soundness of the Fiat Chimera paradigm, even for proofs, just look, uh, focusing on proofs, you cannot prove soundness using what's called kind of a black box reduction to a falsifiable assumption, giving, indicating that using the techniques that we have, we won't be able to prove soundness based on standard assumption. So falsifiable assumption is a notion uh, introduced by Naol. For those who are not familiar with this notion, just think of it as standard assumptions. Okay, it's a notion that should supposed to capture all standard assumptions. Okay. So this is where, where we stand. And now let me uh, explain our results in more detail. So what we show in this work, we actually show an explicit hash function right there. It's IO of a PRF family, uh, such that if you start with any interactive proof that's statistically sound, then your two ar round argument will be sound under some assumptions. So let me tell you our assumptions. First assumption, we need to assume that this I.O. over there that we use is really secure. It has to be actually sub-exponentially secure, or in other words, it needs to be 2 to the n secure where n is the input length. But just think of it as sub-exponential I.O. This is kind of an assumption that often we need to rely on when we use I.O. in applications. Okay, another assumption is that the function f sub s that we I.O. is a, what's called a puncturable PRF, again, with sub-exponential security, and this is known how to construct based on sub-exponential one-way function. And the third assumption, and this is kind of weird, the third assumption actually has nothing to do with the construction. Okay, so the H, the, the hash that I'm using is just I.O. of a PRF, of a puncturable PRF family. So a very secure I.O. and a very secure puncturable a pseudorandom function. But I have another assumption. And the other assumption is I'm assuming exponential security of multi-bit point function obfuscation. I need a, a weak uh, uh, definition obfuscation. We only need input hiding obfuscation, which is kind of weaker than VBB, but uh, we need exponential security for this multi-bit point function obfuscation. Now, when you look at this, it's really not clear where does point function obfuscation come into play. So uh, first, let me say that this, this uh, notion has been studied in previous work before, and it's been constructed under a strong variant of the DDH assumption. Uh, we do not need auxiliary input in this 
assumption for those who, because with auxiliary input, it, there's a lot of caveats. We do not need auxiliary inputs for those who are familiar. Um, but the interesting thing, this assumption is only used actually in, an, in the analysis. Okay, so we, in the analysis, if I have time to show you, you'll see, uh, we use this assumption. Okay, so this is our result. Now let's pause a minute and try to understand this result. So what's the take home message? The take home message here, so maybe, maybe some of you in the audience will say, oh, is this efficient? So the take home message is no, it's not efficient. Should you go and use the Fiat Tremere from now on with this kind of hash function because you know, we proved soundness? No, so do not try this at home. It's be very inefficient, it's not a good idea. So what is the take home message? So there's two ways to think of this result. One is to say, look, this was a proof of concept that you can, there exists hash function for which you can prove security, and you can take this as an invitation to try to you know, prove this for uh, an efficient hash, hash family. One can also think of it as, you know, I don't know, uh, some of us have been trying to prove negative result for, for this, so it kind of shows you, well, in order to prove a negative result, you'll need to disprove these assumptions, so you'll need to overcome, you know, serious hurdles in order to prove a negative result. But in addition, I think uh, this theorem has actually really interesting applications beyond the fiat Chimir paradigm. And let me, uh, give you one corollary. So one corollary that we get out of this theorem is we prove that there does not exist a constant round public coin, zero knowledge proof, a statistically sound proof. So Barak showed this for an argument, for computationally. So Barak showed, sorry, that there exists a constant round public coin argument, computationally sound. Does there exist a statistically sound zero knowledge public coin? We show no. Okay, so this, Problem was kind of opened in, for the last few decades. Uh, there was a very famous work by Goldreich and Kraftschik that shows that there does not exist a constant round public coin black box zero knowledge proof. So if you restrict the simulator to use the cheating verifier as a black box, then there does not exist. But the question whether there exists zero, any zero knowledge proof, non black box zero knowledge proof with constant round public coin was an open uh, question. And a, con a corollary of our, of our main theorem is that under our assumption, there does not exist. And why? Why is that a corollary? So let's recall the transformation that we saw earlier, that if you had a constant round public coin, zero knowledge proof, this in itself is a counterexample, is it demonstrate the insecurity of the Fiat Tremere paradigm. So, hmm. okay, sorry. Uh, so, so if you had such a thing, you'll get that the Fiat Chamir paradigm when applied to proof would be insecure. But what I showed you that under my assumption, this is secure. And so if this is secure, it must imply that there does not exist uh, a constant run public coin zero knowledge proof. Uh, and in particular, what this implies is that Parallel repetition does not preserve zero knowledge. So in particular, take your favorite three round, you know, zero knowledge with constant soundness, I know Blum protocol or three coloring uh, zero knowledge, uh, zero knowledge for, for three coloring, all these protocols. If any of this, if you wanna try to do, run them in parallel, zero knowledge will not be preserved. Okay, so that's a corollary of our main result. Uh, another way to view our result in a different, using different terminology, is we can cast our result in the terminology of correlation intractable hash functions. So this notion was, uh, is a very beautiful notion introduced by Kaneti, Goldach, and Alevi. And this property should be thought of as a proxy to random oracle. So we use ran the random oracle model a lot. And the question is, what property do we really use from these, you know, what property of a hash function does this uh, random oracle model use? And one of the, the property that uh, was put forth is correlation intractability. So what does correlation intractability mean? So a hash function is said to be correlation intractable. If given a hash in the family, it's hard to find x and h of x that satisfy some rare relation. Okay, what does it mean? So for any relation that's rare or evasive, so what is an evasive relation? Evasive relation is one that for any input x, there are only negligibly many y's, 
narrow fraction of y's satisfy the relation. And h is said to be correlation tractable is if for any such rare or evasive uh, relation, given a random hash from the family, it is hard to find x such that x h of x is in the relation. And in the original work of Canetti et al, they showed that there does not exist correlation tractable h with where the description of the hash is short, shorter than the input size. Uh, recently, there's a very nice work of Canetti, Chen, and Raisin that showed that there does exist uh, correlation tractable H, but for some uh, relation, not for all evasive relations, but rather for all evasive relations that, that are computable in some a priori fixed polynomial time, assuming I.O. and related assumptions. And essentially, our result, what we show, is that this specific hash function IO applied to this punctuable PRF is correlation intractable under our assumptions. Okay, so let's just see kind of a quick summary. Uh, so what we showed is under the assumptions uh, stated above that the fiat Schumer paradigm is secure when applied to proofs, uh, which implies that there does not, it resolves the open problem that there does not exist constant round public coin uh, zero knowledge proof which in, in turn implies that parallel repetition does not preserve uh, zero knowledge, and also more generally cast in the language of correlation tractability, we show that there does exist a correlation intractable hash function, which kind of can be used maybe in other settings to try to uh, remove a random oracle. So in the few minutes I have left, maybe I'll try to give a very, very one minute brief overview of the proof. So let's just show the proof idea for the fiat Schumer paradigm. So why would it be secure to go from, from three-round ID to signature? So intuitively, so what is our hash? It's IO of a, of a pseudorandom function. If instead of IO we used VBB security, like virtual black box, we had Oracle, then as we said, it is secure. That's kind of security in the random Oracle model. So that we do, we do know it's secure. But we don't have VBB security. So I.O. is kind of close, so let's use I.O. The question is, is, is I.O. strong enough? Is that type of obfuscation which only uh, uh, promises us indistinguishability, is it strong enough? And what we show is it is strong enough if we start with statistically sound proof, as opposed to computational sound. If we start with computational sound, this is not strong enough because we have examples. But if we start with the statistically sound, it is strong enough. So why? So, what does statistically sound proofs, what properties do they have? The property they have is that for any first message, for an X not in the language, for every first message alpha, there are very few betas for which there exists a gamma that will correspond to an accepting transcript. Now, if we use a PRF, a really strong PRF here, then by the fact, by the strength of this PRF, the fact that F of S, this is not, has nothing to do with IO, just the fact that the PRF is strong in, enough, it means, let's look, let's call alpha bad if beta, which is H of alpha, kind of for that there exists a gamma, okay? So you kind of can cheat with that alpha, okay? So by the secu because it looks like a random function, this property, that there exist few good betas should remain. So still one can easily show that there exists a few bad alphas. So there exists a few alphas for which H of alpha, there exists a gamma. Okay, so ex there exists a few uh, bad alphas. And now the main part is to show, to argue, that IO implies that it's hard to find these bad gammas, these bad alphas. So the IO hides alpha. Okay, and to prove this is that where we use the multi-bit uh, uh, point functions. So I don't have time, but I'll just say that the main idea is to just plant like alpha star and beta star that have an accepting gamma star. To, we kind of plant that in the PRF, and we prove that it's hard to, f that uh, the cheating prover will find this planted uh, alpha star follows from, from our assumptions. And then we get a contradiction by saying, oh, this alpha star that we planted, actually there's no way to find it because we obfuscated, we, we're obfuscating this using a really, really strong PRF. Okay, 
So that's kind of the high-level idea. But again, just to summarize, fiat should be insecure for proofs. This is very great news for me. I've been working on this problem since I was a grad student, so I'm very happy to see an, a positive result. I'll bite under a very strong assumption and inefficient would be great to reduce assumption, to gain efficiency, and so on. And then we get really interesting um, correlation that have nothing to do with the fiat Shamir paradigm and kind of resolve just classical open problems uh, related to zero knowledge, correlation tractability, and so on. Okay, thank you. <laughs>